Hi guys, today we have a guest narrator. He's Smurfy, he narrates on Nerdbeardia. Um, he's over here for a couple of days visiting. So, hope you guys enjoy. I'm taking a few days off, so let's get into the video. Players lost in ruin, trying to evade a Medusa, but they've lost track of her. Where is she? I don't know, let me check. I peek around the corner and roll spot. Why the fuck would you decide to roll for fucking check? Oh, okay, let me just look for this fucking Medusa one sec. Oh, oh, bitch. No one knows what Medusa does. Absolutely no <laughs> cunt in the world knows what a Medusa does. Yeah, let, let's just go for it. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. Are you sure you want to? 19. Booyah! Plus 12 is 31. What do I see? Well, what everyone else sees is you look around the corner and turn to stone. Oh, oh, shocker. Oh, couldn't have seen that one coming. Sorry, oh. GM made Blacksmith's daughter into my character's love interest. My player character married her and they ran off to be happily married and I made a new character. GM is furious with me. What the fuck did he think was going to happen? Honestly, it's a wonderful subversion, and you should be happy. Though, Anon, you do know you are on your GM's shit list now, right? He wanted to murder her, eh, Anon. Fuck. Ah, fuck, I keep it one <laughs> He wanted to murder her, Anon, so his campaign would have emotional stakes and be deep. Deep? Alright, boy, whatever you say. <laughs> this seems most likely. Ran into my fair share of DMs who try pull similar things. What the fuck is wrong with, like... See the amount of shit DM stories we came across? It's actually ridiculous. It's it, it's beyond a joke at this point, you know? <laughs> it's just weird as every cunt that says, you know what, I, I, I don't want to be a player character, I want to be a DM, is an absolute fucking power fantasy spastic. You know? <laughs> no offence to any DMs, because they're all pretty cool DMs, but look, I'm sorry, he's a little bad at it, okay? Be a paladin. Play like an efficient SWAT officer. Despise orcs more than you can imagine. Bro it up with Dwarf who also hates orcs. Slaughter an orc village. Rest of the party, except for the Dwarf, feel like shit because me and the Dwarf are torching huts. <laughs> <laughs> a torching hut filled with baby orcs. <laughs> They don't say anything to me about it, though, because I'm the tactical enforcer of the group. Battling in a cavern, knocked off the side of a ledge, Dwarf Bro grabs me. My helmet has come off for the first time in the game. I'm a half-orc. <laughs> Dwarf lets go of my hand. The game table <laughs> when... <laughs> I'll start. I'm going to preface this with the fact that my girlfriend has just lost her young sister. Enter a party of marshals in a low magic campaign. We begin to realise we need to find a better way of getting around than by running as the weeks it takes to travel is draining too many resources. We get a sentient magic item that allows teleportation, but for every person it teleports it requires a sacrifice of purest soul. The party quickly locks it in the large metal chest that we throw into an even larger metal container. We chain it multiple times over and finally drop it into an ocean and reforge the keys which the rogue uses as a new pair of daggers to put into perspective how many locks we used. We needed to make multiple trips from town just to collect the hundreds of keys we had commissioned so we could get rid of this item permanently. The next morning, it's back in our bags. We begin questioning what to do. Then, DM asks for a will saved from the entire party. GF fails. GF is forced to take the item to teleport to a random location in the world. GF gets up, walks out. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit upset with that one. Yeah. Tell me about the time you outsmarted your DM. I'll bite. Be me, playing a road in PF. We are infiltrating the local thieves guild which is disguised as the bakers guild in our city. Sneak and bluff our way to the head boss. He tries to cut a deal with us saying that he will make us rich if we poison his arch rival in the city. Arch rival is our boss who sent us on this mission to begin with. <laughs> Evil boss man gives us a glass tumbler coated with a special poison to kill our boss. Here's where it gets good. 
I take the tumbler and sleight of hand to swap it with another wine glass that I had stolen earlier in the dungeon, trip and break the wine glass, pretend it's the poison tumbler. Whoops! Can we get another one of those poison chalices, please? Evil boss provides. As he provides, pour him a drink in the poison cup I still have. Propose a toast to our new partnership. He fails his perception check. He drinks from the poison cup he gave us and dies. We take the money and leave. Based. I'm not sure that counts as outsmarting your DM though, it's more like outsmarting an NPC. Yeah, it is more like outsmarting an NPC, if I be honest with you. There's a wee bit of metagaming involved there, but for the most part, I like it. I think it's pretty if it, if it If it adds fun. Yeah, if it adds fun. It's, it's, the, it's it. the rule of fun. Yeah. If, if it makes it fun, it's like DMs cheesing a game. Yeah. If, it, if it makes the experience more fun, who fucking cares? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, you know? Really stupid shit you've actually seen in tabletop RPGs. Dude actually wanted his character to have an armoured fedora. <laughs> the same guy wanted a trench coat, a normal one though, <laughs> not armoured. <laughs> he, he kept role-playing his character dramatically, unsheathing his katana, even if it was already unsheathed or not in his possession. <laughs> This last part created small fits of drama. The dude wanted to roleplay a female. Sure, whatever. He wanted the female to be 10 oh, years hold, old. Hold the fuck up here. Hold what? Fuck up. Um, okay. The DM allowed it for some reason, but forced the PC's stats to reflect this. Dude tried to start a romance <laughs> as the 10 year old girl with one of the older PCs during the second session. Nah, nah, fuck nah, 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 nah. I, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not engaging in your lolly fucking fantasy here, boys. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> People are going to be in the comments because I say I'm not into fucking, like. Uh, no, it isn't just anime. I'm not into, like. Cool playing sex scenes, tabletop games oh, with people. No. It's so awkward. Oh, you you, 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 you should. Tell me you would be up for doing that with like fucking. You know, I'm not. No, I'm not doing it. I'm sorry to say, it's not for me. I I go for the look. Like, okay, it happens. Feet black. Move on. You know. Yeah. Twenty minutes later. There's whole G mod communities based around just erotic role playing. Yeah, nah. uh, it's just it's just nah. Piss like off. If I, if I wanted that, I'd be playing that fucking. What do you call that? Gaia online or Ava, what, what do you call that? Avatar. Yeah, it's yeah, Gaia. It's it's Gaia. Gaia. <laughs> Sorry, we're off on a bit of a tangent. Let's keep going with this clean text. Playing D&D. Farted IRL. Party laughs and then gagged from the smell. <laughs> DM has me do a stealth roll. Nat 1. DM explains how everyone in the game world <laughs> noticed the fart as well. My face when my fart was so bad it transcended reality. <laughs> Alright, first of all, before we get into this next one, guys, I just want to say, I, I cannot do an impression of this guy. He's just such a unique way of talking and just uh, carrying himself in a conversation and yeah, towards we, the camera. Yeah, we, we do, not right? We just can't, we don't have the, we haven't got the skills, right, guys? <laughs> so, like, let's do this, will we? Alright. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Forgotten Spells. I'm Merlion, and today, we'll be looking at... Big B's Big B. Stat it right now, I will never stop casting it. God, that spell is overpowered when used at higher levels by a Shepherd Druid. Four Big B's with a multi-attack and a DC 17 save versus poisoned on the sting, which is already 3d10 plus 4 damage, is just fucking unholy. While it never achieved widespread popularity within the larger military and civilian spellcasting groups, Big B's Big B is a very unique and interesting spell that did see quite a lot of use in the sort of grey area magical groups that cropped up a few decades ago. One of the biggest features of this spell is the fact that it quickly and effectively summons a large B at any point in the caster's field of view. However, unlike most summoning spells, Big B's Big B actually creates a large B on the spot, rather than pulling it from another location via a demonic summoning from another plane of existence. This B appears to be sentient and aggressive, attacking anything within visual range. Unfortunately, or fortunately depending on your point of view I guess, this spell did 
come with a number of issues that really kind of just prevented it from accomplishing wide-scale success in more legitimate markets. The B, while being huge, isn't any smarter or more dangerous than your run-of-the-mill B. It costs quite a bit of mana to use, and the components to make it are rather difficult to acquire. If you're not occupying a niche area of necromancy, and nobody knows where the bees go when they eventually fly away. In short, it's really just a bee, but big. I did do some research before shooting this, but I was not able to find out who Big B was. I guess it just remains a mystery. So I'm going to bring the camera in and we'll take apart the spell and show you the components and how they work. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, we'll leave links down below to Nerdbeardia. It's Neckbeardia's second channel. I warn you, the stuff I got Smurfy to do is Yes, unseemly. Smurfy does. It's horrible. It's fucking horrible. Links down below to watch that stuff. Um, put it like this. It's the stuff... We tried to record one of the videos on For Neckbeardia, but... Um, well, Megan we said, need to pay our rent, so... <laughs> yeah, sorry, it was very, um, not very... <sighs> YouTube friendly. <laughs> yeah, YouTube friendly, that'd be a nice word. But if it. you're curious about it, there, go over to Nerdbeardia, links down below, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! All done.